have just started a publishing company called Morning Coffee Publishing, uh, M-O-U-R-N, the Morning Coffee Publishing. Um, I've been writing some kids' books on grieving, um, more on how to grieve and what it looks like and what it feels like for kids uh, more than anything. Um, but obviously, you know, from that, it's going to kind of... The, the goal is to have the ripple effect from that and um, we're going to be doing some uh, poetry compilation books. Um, my daughter is an amazing poet so she's, uh, she's going through her own work and we'll be, we'll be publishing uh, a book of morose prose that are all hers which are, oh she's amazing. So oh, cool. the yeah, morning coffee publishing, everything that we'll be publishing will be steeped in in, in um, grief, loss, death, dying, all of those more darker <laughs> I hate saying darker because it's just a human condition, but it's something that most people shy away from talking about and deeper. Yeah, deeper. Yeah. So we're we're just that's what we want to concentrate on bringing those um a different venue for that kind of thing for people to read. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I, I do grief recovery, um, I'm a grief recovery method specialist, so I do grief recovery as part of a team here in North Bay. So this is kind of like runs parallel with that in a way. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh yeah, it's an, offsh <laughs> an offshoot of your overall uh, yeah. uh, efforts to help we, people in a lot of what I hear in the in the grief recovery is how people didn't um, know about grief when they were kids. They didn't what they seen modeled might maybe wasn't the healthiest way of dealing with loss. So, my of course I have that creative brain that says, you know what, kids need better language. Kids need a, a better understanding of stuff. Kids grieve. They lose pets. They they move. They have you know friends that. Uh, move away or um, grandparents or parents who pass um, so they experience grief and don't have the language for it. There's a lot of books on on the shelf about um, that mention grief or say this is what where it comes from but not how to actually you know navigate through it. Yeah. And each person has to find their own path to navigate. No? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, every everybody grieves differently, and every relationship and um, is different. So, you're going to grieve differently for your your dog than you will for your grandma than you will for you know having to move across the country. By grief is grief is grief. So, it's all the same, but it's all different. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, different. Yeah. Levels and directions of grief, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, so kids' books on how to grieve in a fun way, hopefully. That's the, the goal, to not make it so scary and just have it be, you know, um, open up the doors to communication between the, the kids and the, their caregivers or parents or whoever's reading them the books or, yeah. And, the, and you started this journey of understanding grief from your own loss. Absolutely, yeah. I've uh, I lost my youngest son seven years ago. He died um, accidentally, uh, and uh, took me three years to reach out for help. And when I did, I realized that I wasn't actually grieving for those three years. What I was doing was like staying one step ahead of it, and. When I learned how uh, a better method or a different method, and I was given this tool, I ran with it because there is so many losses, um, not just death losses, but I've, I've experienced more loss and trauma in my life than, um, than a lot of people maybe. I don't know if more is the right word, but definitely a significant amount of loss and trauma in my life. And so when I learned this method, I just, it's a tool that I can use over and over and over again. And I have been. So I've been on this like journey, this grief journey. It started out as a journey and now I'm on, I'm on a mission to help everybody <laughs> grieve better because I know how m much it makes me feel better. Right. 
And I mean, there's so many aspects of it. My music is a big, it's steeped in grief and healing and um, everything I do, it seems, is, has, uh, you know, has, is touched by that in some way. Hmm. Is there always grief attached to healing? I think so. For me, for mm -hmm. me, there is. Yeah, because grief comes from a, a, a change in a, in a familiar pattern. So any, like, uh, a move, divorce, death, um, anything that, uh, I mean, giving up a bad habit, smoking, if people who, you know, quit smoking, you know, there's a, a grief attached to that. It's not the, as deep a grief, but there's still a grief attached to that. So pretty much everything you go through when you're going through big changes, there can be an emotional, you know, if there's an emotional connection to it, then yeah, there can be grief attached to it. Whenever there's a sense of loss, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is like, it's far encompassing. It covers so many <laughs> different things. You know, in the grief recovery um, program, they have isolated, uh, you know, over 40 significant life experiences that can cause a grief response. It doesn't for everybody, but some people do. Um, you retire from a job you've been doing for 30 years. There's grief attached to that. All of a sudden, you know, it's not necessarily bad grief. Sometimes it's good grief, too. So, so transit, transitionary. Yeah. Whenever yeah. there's a major transition in yeah, your life, there's exactly. there's steps that you feel and take to either recover or deal and, deal with it. Yeah, everybody does it differently, and there's uh, I mean I could probably go on for hours on the different aspects of grief and and uh, uh, the universal um, pieces of it that everybody seems to feel or go through, um, and there's there's different ways of doing it. Are there ways to um, handle uh, looming grief uh, ahead well, of a loss when you know it's coming? Anticipatory, we call it anticipatory grief. And yeah, absolutely. If you, if, if you have someone, a loved one, who is actively dying, um, they go through their own grief process. Uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's stages of grief come into play there. Um, and oftentimes, if you are the person um, assisting someone or being beside them as they're actively dying, you don't get a chance to actually grieve because all your energy goes into being there for them, helping them die in a good way. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the whole goal, right, is to die well. And <laughs> You don't generally get to your turn until they've, they've gone and then all, you know, all the paperwork is done and all the, you know, the detail stuff uh, that happens when somebody dies. And it's usually after the casseroles quit showing up that people really need the most guidance, I find. Um, is there a structure in the things. time frame for some grief? There's really no time limit. Um, uh, I think his name is Brent, Brent Kessel, Kessler, said uh, he was asked that, somebody asked, you know, how long am I going to grieve for um, my sister? And he said, well, how long is she going to be dead? You know, grief is just love for the most part. It's love that is now, you know. Got kind of nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah. Or you don't have the tools to... to yeah. uh, embrace it yeah and there's not that everybody grieves it's a universal thing we mm -hmm. all grieve and yet it's the least talked about human condition there's a million songs about love there's a million <laughs> songs about heartbreak but what follows the heartbreak is sometimes grief so there's like it's the least talked about um, emotional human condition it really is so why is it people are scared to talk about it I know for me, when I lost my son, people were scared of mentioning his name to me. Uh, they didn't want to upset me. Well, it actually did me more good to hear people talking and speaking his name because it meant that I wasn't the only one missing him. I wasn't the only one remembering him. And so for me, that touched me deeper than silence. 
Um, I think a lot of times people just don't know what to say, so they say what they've heard um, time and time again, or they say nothing. Um, it's so it's such a complicated thing. Yeah, we dance around it. Yeah, we do because nobody wants to feel those uncomfortable feelings, and then we end up, you know. Uh, putting a blanket over our, our deepest feelings because we don't want to make anybody else uncomfortable, which is why we don't talk about it, because nobody likes to be uncomfortable. But it doesn't have to be. There's there's ways to talk about it. And, it, and truly, what's wrong with being uncomfortable? Exactly. There's nothing wrong with being uncomfortable. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So there's... Uh, I know a lot of people now are... Uh, seems that they're triggered by something and then they stop talking about it and then they get upset that they're triggered and they go down a path that doesn't yeah. seem very healthy yeah. um, approach to dealing with things. It's okay to be triggered but you still have to do something after that, right? What I learned through my, my journey is to actually feel the feelings. I spent huh? a great deal of uh, emotional energy um, pretending like it didn't hurt mm -hmm. when it did um, and it's all those feelings are still inside me they're just kind of bouncing around and someday they usually most people will can agree with this they usually kind of all those uncomfortable feelings settle in the pit of your stomach and you walk around with this heavy heaviness in your belly or uh, on your heart and um, what I learned for myself is the more I talked about my feelings and looked at them and actually felt them, yeah. you know, once I felt them, they weren't as scary, they weren't as heavy. I got to, you know, let them go. And that, that's such an important piece of healing. So now when, I, when I'm triggered and I say, okay, I'm triggered because of this. And then I give myself a moment sometimes it's a split second sometimes it's a half an hour to just feel whatever it is that I need to feel mm. I kind of walk through it rather than unpack and move in there right which you know um, a lot of people do they get stuck in their grief they get angry they isolate there's so many variables mm. to it so yeah men and women do they grieve different? No. I th I don't I not do they, in, not have, in do when they have different issues for their grief to uh, look at. I think it's it seems to be harder for men to come and um, actively go through a healing process because society uh, societal norms are men are to be strong and don't you know man up we've all heard these things you know man up what does that mean does that mean like just keep stuff in your emotions everybody has feelings so um what i've noticed in um as a facilitator for this program we always have at least one man that comes into a group uh, at least one and they get so much out of it that they tell their buddies and then the next group we've got two men that said well my buddy went through this and wow did we ever see a change in him we want that um, but that's the same for women too I think men find it harder to reach out for help I think well Just there's a penalty to pay when sometimes. you do yeah sometimes often like yeah. society's changing a little bit where you can where you can reach out uh, and not feel the penalty of reaching out. Yeah. Um, the man up thing is interesting. Uh, if you ask people to define it, what they say, right? Yeah. Like man up uh, for me is uh, don't let your emotions get in the way of the job that needs to be done right now. Yeah. Right? Sometimes the job that needs to be done right now is healing. And sometimes you have <laughs> to man up to feel. And, and go through a process. Absolutely. Right? It's if not easy. Grieving, actively grieving and, and going through that process is not for sissies. Yeah. It's gross. It's messy. It hurts. Um, one of the analogies that I like to give is um, so out on the prairies where it's just like fields and fields, it's wide open spaces. And um, if there's a storm coming through, cows 
cattle will run from that storm. They will run themselves to death, literally. They will run off a cliff to avoid that storm because it's scary. The buffalo will head straight into the storm, get through it, and be on the other side. Yeah, head into it. Yeah, yeah they, they, you know, heads down and they just, you know, shoulder in and they go through the storm because they know it's inevitable. It's, and it's coming passing. and it's not going to last forever. Right. So I was a cow. I was a cattle for three years. I was running from that storm because I know that's that's a big one. Yeah. And that one's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just ran from it. And when I finally turned and faced it and went through it, I went, okay, it's number one. Yeah, it still was scary and it still hurt. But when I got to the other side of it, I could look back at the storm and say, well, that was the worst storm I've ever seen. So any other storms coming at me are not, they're going to pale in comparison to that storm. Mm -hmm. So now when I see a storm brewing and coming, I just, I turn into the buffalo. When I just put my shoulder down, I go through it. I like that analogy. Yeah. yeah. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it. I mean, we, we run from or we run through. Either way, the storm's coming. <laughs> you can run yourself to death away from it, or just yep. go through it. I wonder if there's a, an, an evolved term that we can use other than man up is to, to face your uh, face your challenges head on. Um, I know the human up, I guess. <laughs> One of the things we say a lot in the in the grief recovery is. Uh, to give honor to how we're actually feeling without making other people uncomfortable or because um, some people will ask well how are you doing but they don't really have the time to actually hear how you're doing yeah and so to kind of give them uh, it, what we say is I'm okay except when I'm not and that's okay yeah yeah which is a very simple way of saying, right, I'm okay except when I'm not, which leaves that door open for that other person to say, well, I got time, do you need to talk? Hmm. Or it honors that fact that yeah, I'm, not, I'm not always okay. And, yeah. Yeah, I find that uh, there's an interesting sort of power play on, on, on sharing your feelings, and power play is the wrong word, but there's... Uh, sometimes you're burdening the other person in, uh, in a spot where they're, they're not able to carry that. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's where that saying comes in, too. Very handy. They say if somebody says, well, how are you doing, Dave? You say, well, you know what? I'm okay, except when I'm not. Hmm. And that honors that when you're not. So you're not lying. You're not burdening them with, you know, anything. And I think that's what keeps a lot of people isolated in their grief and in their sorrow is that fear of burdening the other person. Right. So it's important to find the person that can sit with you in your loss and in your grief. And not everybody can do that. And that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can. Um, when you find someone who can though, what a blessing that is to have someone to be, you know, your uh, heart with ears. Right. Because most people who are grieving don't need to be fixed. We don't need to be fixed. We just need to be heard. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's just enough to have somebody listen. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have anything but time and an open heart to just sit with somebody when they're going through the shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Truly, yeah. that's the biggest piece, just to show up for, for each other. But it's okay to say, you know what, I'm not doing great today, but thanks for asking. Hmm. Yeah. You know, we need to normalize some of this stuff that it's, you know, from the time we're, we're little kids, we're told, you know, if we're having big emotions that make other people uncomfortable, we're sent to our room. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going to cry, just go to your room and yeah. do that, right? Yeah. We don't do that with the happy feelings. No. Oh, my God, you're so full of joy. Would you just get out of my face? Take your joy and happiness and go to your room with that. We never yeah. do that. And no. so as young people, little kids, we're, we're conditioned to hide those feelings and to grieve alone. Right. Right. So this is where it comes back to the idea with these books that, I, that I'm writing is to 
find, to help kids find vocabulary to say, you know what, I'm not okay. These are the, this is how I'm feeling. Um, and give them an outlet for it in some way, shape, or form. To try and, I lost my son to uh, addictions and had I had the vocabulary to teach him the vocabulary to talk about his feelings, he maybe might, he maybe, maybe he wouldn't have tried to run away from how he was feeling into substances mm. and, you know, maybe he'd still be here today. I don't know, but it can't hurt. Can't well, hurt to give people better language. No, no, it can't. So. When, when do your first books come out, or are they out? Or? Oh, Evie! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on it, working on it. Uh, I, there's going to be a, a series of books that stem off of one main story. Right. So the main story is like the trunk that of a tree. So if you think of a tree, and off of that tree are all these branches. Mm -hmm. So the main tree trunk is written, and I have... Um, most of the first main branches written. So, fingers crossed, this time next year should have some books on the shelf. We're going to be looking at doing um, some audible books to get the ball rolling and get some uh, interest peaked in having hardcover books because I'm pretty sure people are still reading hardcover books. But oh, with their kids especially. <laughs> yeah. Anything to get them uh, to interrupt this trend we have of, uh, of uh, depending on that screen over there. Yes. Um, any yeah. heart, like the, the magazine that I'm, I'm publishing is uh, a relief for many that they can take a time to read something that they enjoy yeah. away from the computer. Yes. Like they're still doing the computer and there's lots there that's good. Yeah. But it, to have that break to read yeah. and to have something tangible, you know. Yeah. You should do, uh, have you considered Pre-sales as um, a way of m raising money for the well, publication costs. We're 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 kind of brainstorming some marketing ideas yeah. and, and that kind of thing for sure. Um, my daughter is uh, taking the lead on all of that that part of it, so she's like the chief executive officer. <laughs> so you know we're we're building a website. We are. Um, working on that kind of thing right now um, and I'm doing the writing piece and actually she's going to be doing the illustrations from for the books which is I'm so excited to be working with my kid on right, something right, like so. this yeah. it's kind of a cool legacy project worst case scenario we sell a book you know out of this whole experience, we are we are becoming um, a closer family, regardless. Yeah. Um, but the the big dream is to have you know. Well, it's a big, big, big dream. Is I just want this to. I want to get legs up underneath of this this company so that my daughter has an outlet, so that my grandkin has an outlet. Yeah, you're building something for the family. Yeah, it's a legacy project, I guess, in a way. Oh, cool. So all steeped in grief and loss, which sounds weird when you you know, but it's not. It's not. I don't think it's weird at all. I think that uh, as a family, we've gone through a lot already. So it's a healing, it's part of the healing journey for me. I mean, there's so many things that I'm doing in my life to help me heal. So I'll take a, I'll take a chance and say that it sounds like uh, um, actualized grief is growth. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And sometimes it's two steps forward and three steps back. Which but is slow growth. Yeah. Which is the, sturdy, growth, as the sturdiest. As, as long as it's going, as long as you're moving forward, the, the miraculous thing about our mind and our psyche is that we can't unlearn something. Yeah. Yeah. You can't unlearn it. So once you've learned it, you, you, you will only go so far back before, you, you know, you catch yourself or you're, you're, psyche your your spirit whatever you want to call it says hey wait a minute you know we don't have to go that far back we know better we know we have tools mm -hmm. yeah you don't have to keep painting the house with a hammer 
they have this brush thing that works way better. Yeah, you can <laughs> learn new tricks. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Yeah. So. Well, that's cool. Well, you're carrying your banjo there. Uh, is there anything? Is it in tune? Can you give me a couple of licks? I have some other video of you playing, so yeah, I don't need I it. actually have been doing some really fun, like uh, talking about the different things to, to do for healing. I have, uh, I've been out at uh, Horse Ability in Corbeil. Yeah doing some um, personal growth stuff out there, um, working a, a program, I guess you would call it, with the horses, which is so much fun. Oh my gosh. It's fun, and I find uh, when I come home from my hour out there with the horses, I just, that energy, the strength, the lessons that I'm learning there, I'm carrying through till the next week almost and uh, I'm really proud of myself like this last week just Tuesday yeah I was um, glad to be joining you and yeah that was it. really fun I, I had the idea the week before of uh, you know I wonder if horses like music I thought I'll bring the banjo out we'll see what they how they feel about it and it was really cool because like horses mirror us in real time uh, but they have their own little personalities and stuff. So, yeah, there's some video of uh, the one horse. I think it was Greeny. Greeny uh, was coming up and was, like, literally had his face right, uh, you know, smelling the strings and smelling the banjo as I was playing it, which was really cool. Um, and Noah, as well, is one of the horses there that struggles with anxiety. So it was really cool to see him just kind of like, oh, I think I might like this. So I'm getting out of it. The horses are getting something out of it too. It's uh, yeah. It's just another another tool in my in my you know my arsenal of for my healing mission. It started out as a journey, and now I'm like I'm on a mission to to heal. I have I've got lots to lots to heal. Music is one outlet. Writing the kids' books. Uh, doing that uh, personal growth therapy with the horses, um, doing stuff like this, just even talking about it. These are all tools in my... In my Sounds to me like you're just living. I am, yeah. <laughs> right? I'm trying to live my best. I'm yeah. trying to be a better Esther today than I was yesterday. That's the, that's the only, that's really the only point to it. I spent so much of my life trying to run away from. Right. And, uh... I started this journey, and to me the difference between a journey and, and a mission is the journey leads you, um, the mission, now I'm in control of the where it's leading me a little more, and I'm more determined, I've become more buffalo, <laughs> tatanka, <laughs> I got my horns out and I'm like, let's, let's tackle some of this heavy stuff so that I can be a better me. The mission is life. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, and I'm enjoying it. Yeah, so playing music. Um, Have you? Uh, are you working on any new tunes? Or are you... I'd like to say yes, I am, Dave. But the truth is, I've been so busy with so much other stuff. I really haven't written anything new. Um, I'm waiting on some grants to come in. Um, fingers crossed. I should know the end of this month. Uh, um, if I get the grant that I applied for, then album number four, I'll be working with Peter Cleish again, and uh, we will be in the studio this fall. Oh, that's cool. Fingers crossed, yeah. It'd be nice to be able to pay the man what he's, what he's worth, not just what he'll take. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. No, that's, that's cool that yeah. Yeah, Peter's uh, like uh, the master there. That can oh, help he's, you out for and sure. I just love working with him. He's just... Um, I'm going to link in the... Uh, video I did when you were uh, finishing uh, a song with them. And, yeah, uh, the, for the, Big the, the other uh, song that we did at the uh, other place, the first time I met you. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're becoming uh, like a voluminous in my uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yay! Well, that's good. I, I'm uh, okay with that. I like I'm your okay cause and I, I, I like how you go about things and I, I love how you play and sing. So this is well, cool. Well, it's interesting because I've had a lot of people come up to me in the last probably year and a half. As I've really knuckled into this healing journey and this mission that have come to me and said your your voice and how you express when you're singing, there's something different about it. And I think I'm letting go of a lot of fears mm. and I'm letting go of a lot of weight 
that is you know so I feel freer it's like uh, a hot air balloon that is it has too many bags on it you can only lift up so so far so everything that I'm dealing with is like cutting another sandbag off so I'm just going onwards and upwards man I just want to see what it's all about before it's done <laughs> sounds like you're gaining confidence yeah absolutely <clears throat> I don't know uh, there's one of the songs that hopefully will be on uh, the new album there's two of them I could play uh, hope swells is about that little nugget that sits inside me that um, hasn't let me give up on life that keeps me moving that keeps me cutting the sandbags off essentially so I can try that one if I can remember all the words you might have to edit it down to just a clip <laughs> could be okay. the magic of editing yeah. <laughs> ah, this is Hope Swells it's under my skin Hope Swells messed up <laughs> version. well what, what I like about what you do is uh, it's uh, honest in both your joy and your grief yeah and, and uh, I think that resonates with people it's just that it's uh, like it's be real you got to be real yeah and it's not performative like no. it's, it's it's you're sharing right yeah. so uh, I think people connect to that when they know it's an honest sharing yeah, yeah. well I, I love that part of the whole process Mm -hmm. So when I go to open mics and I'm playing covers and those are fun and I like you know kind of surprising people when I'm like show up with a banjo and I start playing cold play mm -hmm. on the banjo or you know I folk up a Ozzy Osbourne tune or something and I like that it makes you know gets a laugh it gets a surprise but the part that I, I love the most is when I have the opportunity to tell the story behind one of my songs and then play it and share it. Mm -hmm. um, it means more to me to have people come up and say, you know that song, this one there, that resonates with me. If only one person ever comes up and says, it's like you wrote that song for me, I've won. Yeah, it, I've done it. my job. Yeah, yeah. That's gold. Yeah, gold. You know, for sure. I don't need to sell a million records. I just need to reach. It's all about communication. It's all about reaching people in an honest way. Yeah, and I love it. So. All right on. Well, uh, I think we got enough to get the message across. <laughs> that you're that you're very worthy of checking out and make sure people, uh, when it's all possible, they can. Uh, buy your stuff we'll try yeah. to put some links uh, for streaming yes. and whatnot right that helps put yeah. some food on the table 
All the all my music is on all the streaming sites. Okay, which one pays you best? Oh, I'm not really sure. They don't all pay. Like it just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I should know this stuff. Yeah. Um, I've heard different people direct people to a specific one, seeing it was uh, more well, better than others. Bandcamp, you can download the al my albums really cheap. If you want the hard copies, you know, see me. Yeah. Okay. I still have I still have some actual CDs for people who like the real thing. Yeah. Well, I can sign those. It's kind of yeah. hard to sign a digital I, I'd like download. To, you need something tangible. Yeah. It's it's really hard to put value on something digital. It's tougher and tougher anyway. Yeah. And really, honestly, if you want to support your local artists, go and see where they're playing. Yeah. Because uh, I know for myself, I am, I feel more connected live. Of course. Then, you know, yeah. CDs are fun to make and it's recording process is, is an interesting process. Mm -hmm. But I get more out of connecting in real time. So. Well, you can tell when you see it live. Yeah. 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 It shows through. So. It's different. Well, awesome. it's great talking again. And, uh, <laughs> you too. We're definitely going to be talking again after you get yeah. back from uh, Montreal. Yay! And I uh, hope everything goes well for you. Yeah, I'll try and get some. I'll try and get some footage. Put my kid in front of or behind the camera. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I know that there. There's always uh, a photographer out and about for the festival, so that should be.